perfect. I will try. I will do it a bit louder. It's it's now still okay. Or it's... you sound good. What it is? It's you're getting the feedback of me speaking. Yeah. Okay. But I have no idea how I can. But that's 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 fine, Peter. Let's just jump right in. Okay. Okay. So first of all, welcome. Yeah. Really thanks for the invitation. Yeah. Really happy that you could join us and that um, you could share some of your, your, your work and your, your, your mission, your purpose with us. Um, and so before I start, uh, let me just flip this over uh, so I can give people a proper in introduction to you. Yeah. Uh, Peter Stelzig, a photographer documenting Berlin graffiti scene since 2001 has been focusing primarily on train graffiti movement and the artists, which has culminated in a series of photo essays books, which include Decades, Volume 1, 1990, 2000, Running the High Line, Graffiti Photographers United, and Analog versus Digital, Train Writing Art Photography. And so, Peter, let's jump right into decades. Uh, and yeah. and before we jump right in, I want to know what was the motivation to go from graffiti writer to documentarian? The documentation as a the motivation to, to document by photography or to the motivation to do the book, the decades? To, 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 to turn yourself towards the photography of, of trains, but also to the artists themselves, to the act of, of painting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, at the beginning I was a normal graffiti writer in the, in the late 90s. And uh, yeah, um, I was a lot of painting and by the years I had um, more and more troubles uh, with the police. And yeah, in, in the end of the zero years, I yeah, I was on the on the point. I I wanted to change something, and so I looked for yeah, it was an organic process. So I I switched from from painting trains to only take photos uh, of trains. Yeah, and. Yeah, it, it became more and more and I started to make the books and uh, yeah, it was, was, was nice work. And so, yeah, it became more and more. So I, I just started with, uh, let's do one book. And then I thought, it, I thought okay, um, I want to do one book more. And then I had a new idea and so was, yeah, so was well, there three books and now I'm releasing the fourth one uh, about the history of graffiti in the 90s so there are not my photos it's uh, I collected uh, photos and and speak with with uh, writers in the last two and a half years to to create this book yeah so uh, let me ask you something in terms of of Berlin graffiti you're covering it from the 90s uh, on and definitely it, it, Berlin definitely had a graffiti scene in the early 80s were you familiar with with that scene at all when you were when you were a young kid no I, I, I was born in 1984 in the GDR so I had no idea about graffiti uh, I think it started in, 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 in West Berlin in the middle of 80s and in the GDR, graffiti was before the, the wall, wall break, uh, was very rare. So the real graffiti scene was, was not exist, existing in the GDR. Yeah. So this it's, piece you see is from, from 1990. The Zoma now, will come. Now, is that, in, in the, it, is, is that East Berlin or West Berlin? This photo is in West Berlin. It's in uh, Kreuzberg, and yeah, Zoma was also a writer from West Berlin. Yeah. 
T tell me about that period when the when the wall was up and then that that it finally came down. Do you have any particular memory of that moment? Yeah, I have. I have. Um, we we lived um, directly at the wall. Um, I with my mom. So we we uh, it was near near the station uh, Bonheimer Straße. It was the first. Uh, First uh, place, the first border um, border um, where where do where do people can go to West Berlin? And uh, we from our from our flat, uh, we can look directly directly on the wall. So I can remember that. And after the wall break, I remember um, my mom woke me up in the night and uh, told me, uh, Paul. Uh, um the 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 wall break uh, is is there and uh yeah i was 6 years old but i i i i had an idea what what she's talking about so um so that is something very good and 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 the next day we moved to west berlin i can remember there were a lot of people at the border and a lot of people to get uh, all all people from the GDR got 100 D mark um, welcome welcome money, and uh, we we waited uh, maybe for one hour in a in a long line uh, to get this this money, and um, then I remember we we went uh, to a store and uh, bought some uh, Milka chocolate. I can about. The wall break. A, a question about now that when when you you're living in West Berlin. Now I'm living living in East Berlin. Right, you were still living. You crossed over, but went back to East Berlin. Yeah, it was just for for cross the border and see see what's on the other side, just to visit West Berlin. Yeah, just to buy some chocolates, and we went back. <laughs> So, so I'm I'm really curious about when you start coming up as a kid and start noticing uh, the culture from West Berlin, right? Because now they they've been adopting uh, American culture, particularly the hip hop culture and the graffiti writing culture. Um, what was your first impression of it? What was your first impression as a kid of of kids writing on the wall? Um, yeah, the, my, my real, so I was, uh, the, the real, real impression, uh, about the really first impression about real graffiti. So I, I did tags. I started to doing tags in, in 1996 or it was early 1997. I did some tags on the way from my home to my school uh, I wrote there uh, at the walls. I wrote with a with a adding um, uh, shotgun because I I watched uh, the movie um, Top Gun uh, with Tom Cruise in the TV, and one of the 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 pilots uh, he has written uh, the, his name was Shotgun on his helmet. I really liked the film. So I tagged this on all the doors uh, to my school, but it was not on a graffiti motivation. Uh, it was just doing shit. <laughs> and but um, later, as I was fourteen, I changed the school, and in my 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 new class, uh, there were graffiti writers. Uh, um, one who was painting, still painting before, and. Uh, yeah, so with, with that, with that people, I came in touch to graffiti, and on my way to school, I I had to walk uh, at the at the S Bahn line uh, to the station to to enter uh, to enter the S S Bahn the S train, and I recognized it was full of graffiti, so that that was my my first experiences and. And another really big experience in the new school I changed after the sixth uh, class to the seventh. And at the new school, the toilets were full of graffiti, really, really full. So there were tags completely, the, the toilets were completely bombed 
un until uh, two meters or two meter fifty uh, with tags and spray can tags was completely full. So that was my first uh, graffiti exper experiences. Yes, and then. Um, in the beginning of the eight class with 14, I, I started uh, doing sketches. And yeah, the other boys in my class was a little bit like, oh, okay, now you're doing it also. And yeah, you have to, to um, practice it much more. And hmm, maybe maybe later you, you can do it. But it was, they, they were not really uh, respecting me. And so I, I was fast with, with doing uh, illegal uh, bombings at the street and at the line uh, to, to get the respect of my classmates. Yeah. So it was, was first, first uh, fast um, that I, that I uh, came, came into the game. Yeah. And so when you came into the game, were you being exposed to any of the uh, documentaries and books like Subway Art um, or yeah. any, uh, Back Jumps and things like that? Yeah, I, uh, really, really early. I uh, got from uh, Neon Six, uh, it was a guy from another class. Um, he he, he uh, took me... Uh, early uh, in his crew and and um yeah was uh, uh, went to do bombings in the streets and he gave me a graffiti art uh, six from schwarzkopf and schwarzkopf and that was really really impressive for me and i started uh, uh, to drawing the amok pieces in the book so yeah it, it was my first uh, book and my first uh, yeah there I saw a lot of trains, and that was really, really impressive for me. Yeah, I'm, and we're looking at this picture of a young guy in the train yard holding up a bat, holding up a bat. which yeah. reminds it, me it, of it, it, Des. From Zinfu, Peace to Desire, he is also online, I see. And um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's Zim crew. It's boy, I think. Yeah. He has a butt. So in... in and in the 90s, in the, in the beginning, a um, lot of writers, especially when they went to the, to the east side to painting the trains there, uh, often they took uh, weapons, weapons uh, with them because they were scared about the Nazi, Nazi gangs or in eastern of Berlin. Yeah, so they had often uh, gas guns or stuff like that um, with them in the yards. And yeah. how were the officials treating you? How was the law against graffiti during that period? Um, yeah, so um, in especially after the wall break um, in 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 Eastern Berlin, yeah, the, there was one year after wall break to to the to the reunion of uh, East and West uh, Germany. And in that year, there were, in the eastern part, there, it was very confused for the police and the secret service. Everything was down. So there were, yeah, that, it was very open, especially in East Berlin. Berlin, They had no idea about graffiti. So the, the, the writers from West Berlin came to East Berlin. And, yeah, there, there was they, they they can do what they want a little bit in in the yards and um yeah when when they when they got busted by the police the police was a bit like okay what we should do with them what is it uh, so it was in the, uh, 1990 um but it became uh, so there was after the war break there was a big big boom in berlin and so the graffiti boom and a lot of people started writing and doing trains and stuff like that. So it became fast that, uh, yeah, the, the, the law was harder, you know, became, became harder. Well, one of the things that I appreciate about the Decades book is that you've, you've taken pictures of the artists, right? Um, you show these young kids. This is the Amok, yeah. Um, yeah, who, there are also a lot of photos of uh, writers with unblurred uh, faces. Yeah. 
Right. You you turned your eye to documenting the creative process, right? Um, mm -hmm. Talk about in decades, like your approach to decades um, between the photographs, the people, and the writing. Uh, what were you getting out of it that, uh, as, as, as a documentor as a, and as, as an observer? Um, how I... Can you? I, I understood what uh, what you mean, but what what was what's the question? Uh, how how I did so what? Question, let me frame it like this, right? You turn from being a writer, and then you start oh, yeah. photographing uh, not just the trains, but the kids, right? And and that's yeah. the one thing that 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 was uh, caught my attention was that you were observing the young people, uh, having fun in action. Uh, the tables turn now you're looking at them mm -hmm. um, what was what was uh for you what were you getting out of it as, 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 in, in terms of being the documenter and the observer yeah yeah i think uh, all all the writers also me uh, in, in the young time it was uh, doing trains there a very very free moment to do this and uh, to discover all this all the berlin and uh, the yards and everything so um, and yeah i think yeah it was a process over the years that that i i changed um the how can I say um, the the point of view? So it it is more yeah you know when when you're taking photos of your um, of your pieces you are very focused on your piece you know like taking the the best photo of your piece but when you when you're a photographer and see the graffiti you you do more uh, insinuation with the background, with the everything around and, and looking, um, yeah, you are not, you are not watching the piece. You, you want to, to put it in the room and want to, to that, that it looks something special, especially or for me, it is like this, you know, for to, to watch about the background, what's the background. So, you know, when you, when you take a photo or for a painted train, every second, the background of the train is a different. So you have very, very free um, possibilities uh, to, to, do a, to do a photo of it with a special background. So you, you, it's, not, it's not used to, to go at the station and take a photo where you have, on the photo is only a train with a panel. So you, can, you have very, very lot of possibilities uh, to do an installation about this, this train. And that you're learning uh, when you're a photographer and when you change your point of view. Because as I was a writer, I did exactly the same photos like a writer did. And it just changed uh, when, when, I, yeah, when I changed my point of view. Yeah. And especially, it, it's it's when you're doing books, it's um, better when you're not so focused on the graffiti, and or in, in my opinion, I can just say what I think. You know, um, when you yeah, you also see look at the background, and you know I'm social worker, so you have also always a social background. So for me. It was very, very important or very, very nice to that I can also show uh, pictures of people with unblurred uh, uh, faces. Yeah. In right. The book. So it, it also becomes kind of a uh, a social anthropology, I would imagine. So, Peter, yeah. I want to share an observation. Because we're on the, we're on, we're focused on a decade with the first yeah. book. And what we see in this particular whole car is how well, well designed it is with the pieces. It looks like they took their time. Uh, it, 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 it looks like they, they had more time to do their pieces comparatively to the more recent work that's done probably a bit faster. Is that, is that, a, is that a correct observation? 
Hmm. I think there are different when you when you're thinking about uh, how long the writer can paint. You have different periods, and yeah, maybe in mid the '90s, the people uh, were, were painting, or beginning the '90s, the people were painting a long time, and the spray cans were shitty. So, and but uh, at the end of the '90s, the people like from the DRM crew, Rust, Freak, Talk. Uh, also other other crews uh, they they painted uh, more faster because uh, the writers a lot of writers from before they, they stopped writing because they said it's too dangerous now and there was a lot of space to to um, to have a new um, to do the the more 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 pieces or to do the, the spots because uh, the old writers stopped writing. So there was a lot of uh, space to, to paint a lot of trains and they painted very, very faster. So, and when you compare it with today, uh, the people are now more professional. They have uh, cell phones, they have good, good spray cans. Uh, they have water-based spray cans, which are not smelling. So the, today, often the writers are painting longer again. Yeah, more time. Do conceptual cars or stuff like that, or between the trains. Um, now we are watching um, pieces from the zero years. It's all photos I took before. We watched the photos from the decades uh, book, uh, which I didn't took. So I got them from other writers. So this let me go back, Peter, if I, if, I, if, if I can interrupt you, Peter. It just, I, there's a yeah. question that's, that I'm, that's burning in me. Is that why yeah. did you feel you had to make that book? The Decades? Yes. Um, it started with a, with a photo box. Uh, we got it uh, from, uh, from uh, Puck, from TK Crew. Um, he gave it uh, to to a friend of mine, and he bring it to my house, and it was a photo box with I don't know uh, six hundred photos, and it was a mixture of the photos of the nineties, and we 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 watched these photos and s said uh, yeah we we should do something with these photos, and. So we, we started with the idea um, of doing a book and then uh, we, 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 we checked the photos and thought, ah, okay, now we have a lot of photos, but uh, we should do, ask more people to get some photos and do portraits. And we, we had the idea, ah, we, 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 maybe we, we should do some interviews and um, then I started to do this, and it became more and more about the um, along the period of two and a half years. It yeah became more and more people, um, more and more photos. So it was an organic process. I was not. It was not like I I I, I went with a big concept on the book. It was more like okay. Um, we have these photos. Mm, so because of my, uh, I'm a social worker, so I had the idea uh, what, what could be interesting questions um, about uh, the people and not only about the people, also about the social background of the people. And that's, I started and so it became more and more and more. And in the last half year, so half year um, ago, I, I went uh, public uh, with the book project and the last month um, it really, really became more and more that uh, I did more interviews, more people. So half a year ago, it was just a half book and the, the rest of the book um, yeah, was done in the last half year. So. so, so Peter, I'm glad you bring up the social work part of it. Um, 
because that's a very interesting part of the culture, right? What people don't know personally about these young people. Um, what surprised you the most? What, what did you learn that you didn't expect about graffiti writers and the act of writing? Hmm. It's difficult to say because it was, yeah, you know, I, I was a part of this or I am a part of this subculture. So, and especially in the process of social work and my bachelor thesis, thesis um, it was really hard for me to, to create a critical view on it to do a, analyze the graffiti scene uh, for my bachelor thesis. So it was really hard process. Can, can you share the thesis with us? The, the title oh. of the thesis. The thesis? Yes. Um, yeah, but not now. <laughs> No. It's yeah. Or, or, it's, or was it? Was it? Because what I remember in our conversation. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can tell you something about the thesis. Yeah. The, um, the, the, the meaning of suppression of on the yeah. Berlin graffiti. The, the question in the thesis was, uh, what's the meaning of repression uh, for the for the writers of the Berlin graffiti subculture? And yeah. And it was a research uh, I did with mates from my university um, uh, for one and a half year. We did interviews uh, with two different crews and um, to analyze uh, what they said. So the so it was hard for me to do the to analyze it because for me everything was normal. What this what this guy is speaking because I was a part of the culture and for me was everything normal. So that's, I'm, I try to say that it was very hard uh, to, to create a critical, critical view on the graffiti scene. And yeah, I, I, yeah, that's the result of the bachelor thesis is that repression uh, had not, uh, it's not really stopping graffiti. It helps more uh, that the people become fame because they can show, ah, I, I took the risk. I, I did the train. I did that. I did that. Um, so I, 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 I took the risk and uh, it helps the people to, to do an incination of, of their, of their uh, graffiti name. Um, and to show um, what they can do uh, in in this short term with their letters and everything, the, sh the short time, what I can do or and repression. An another effect of repression is that the is profession professional professional. Pro um, it makes the the graffiti scene. Um, more professional. So when when the police um, has has new tactics, then also the graffiti writers develop uh, new tactics. So um, that that's the two um, most important effects of repression uh, in the graffiti scene. Well, this, my English is not the best. Yeah, my English is no, not no, the best. Okay. So I hope you understood it. Uh, I I bring some beer. I hope. Uh, my English uh, will become better, but <laughs> yeah, I'm doing my best. We'll see. Hey, listen, on the idea of tactics, yeah, uh, I remember, I think in the early 2000s or something, I saw images of uh, German writers using night vision glasses mm -hmm. in the layup. And I thought that was interesting that they're getting tactical now. Um, yeah, maybe now. Um, but I think first uh, the police used the uh, warm or night night shot or warm warm um, cameras. When you see that there is something warm, I, I got busted one time by a warming uh, camera. Um, yeah, now it's become cheaper, so you can, um, so you can buy them and, but for, for, um, 
example, um, now you have uh, special sensors and uh, the, the writers learn very fast how they can manipulate uh, the sensors. Or when, when you, when it's, when it's became um, more dangerous because you have a lot of police uh, on the street, it became more dangerous to do um, big, big uh, bombings on the street. Um, yeah, you, 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 the people are starting to do tags by uh, fire, fire, fire lusher, how you call it in English. Can somebody yeah. help? And we were talking about the Highline project. Yeah. And what was interesting to me exactly. and, and how you were capturing, yeah. looking at the trains from a distance yeah, so I, and, cap yeah. and capturing the community. And it reminded me of Martha Cooper's pictures, right? Like how she was taking these pictures from a long distance, as opposed to how Henry was documenting. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, it was special to do this in Berlin at the High Line because um, I, you, you just, before, there were sometimes some shots of writers who, who found a place, um, who found a place to do pictures like that. But um, it were not very much pictures. Um, so I recognized uh, that there, as I, as I watched at the houses from the moving subway, uh, I recognized uh, that there are so, so, so many places to do pictures like that. And yeah, it was a perfect moment because uh, all subways uh, were bombed. And so it was in half an year, I every, every morning uh, before I, or on my way to work, every morning I, I sneaked uh, into the houses and uh, ring at the bell downstairs and say something like, oh, I'm the postman or stuff like that. And, and uh, came into the houses and waited uh, in the houses uh, to, to get a nice subway panel um, from the position there. And yeah, it was, uh, I, I checked, I have the book here. I have all the books here. Um, so I do it um, systematically, yeah? So, um, oh, okay, it's glad to see. Um, I did it systematically um, from station to station and and the the, the, uh, the finish or the, I wanted to take at least like three or five, um, um, three or five pictures um, between from different spots, but between every station on the viaduct high line. So you have viaduct high lines is this steel high lines. You have also in New York, um, you have only two lines. Uh, it's the U1 and U3. It's the U1 line in, in Kreuzberg and the U2 line in uh, Prenzlauer Berg and the center of the city. So, um, yeah, that was half a year uh, work. Uh, do it every morning. Um, yeah, that was that was the first that was the first picture I did um, from a position like that, and. It was so, I, I really liked this first picture and I think it was, it was the start of the motivation to do more pictures like that. Yeah. yeah this book, this picture has a lot going for it. And, and I, I want to stay here for a second because it's very interesting. Uh, yeah. I think as a photograph composition wise, it's, it's fantastic. But one of the things that we see, and this kind of just for a minute, I was like, well, this reminds me of Brazil. But you see on the side of the building, on the balconies, all the graffiti there, right? And if I zoom yeah. in on this building, you see some writing on the side of the building. And then also yeah. somebody just did, is that a roll up or just a grip on the side of the yeah. building? Which is quite interesting. And then you have the graffiti on the trains. Yeah. So, so it, it, that really gives you a sense of the the, the, the activity of writing in Berlin in this period. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have this this roll ups from the top, you have this pick show style from uh, Paradise and yeah, you have the bombed bombed subways. Uh, that that's that's what what I was I was talking about uh, in the 90s or in the zero years uh, never never bombed uh, or it was never bombed subways went in traffic. So that was really um Uh, effect of the last years it started that uh, maybe f six years ago that sometimes or yeah so that, Peter, that's, I have a that's, question. That's, yeah if I can uh, since you're documenting all these trains do you get to meet the the writers that uh, that you're of the, the artists work I mean, do you get to meet the the artists who paint these trains? Do you do you share your photographs? Mm -hmm. Um, yes and no. Um, I'm. I I think I met. I meet very few. Very few. Uh, personally, I me I meet very few of the writers, but uh, all the writers or almost all. I'm connected uh, by the internet. So they're writing me um, if they can get photos or they tell me, oh, I did something new. Uh, maybe you can watch for it, taking a photo. So a lot of people doing this, not all. And there are also some, some people in Berlin which don't like uh, when you take photos of their pieces and put them to the internet that exist also. But it's just a very, very, very few writer. Um, the most of the writer, um, yeah, tell me, tell me when they did something new or asking me for photos to share them uh, with them. And yes, I do it, and and I like it to be in contact with them. And sometimes I go with them on on action and do also some some action shots. But uh, yeah, last time, not very often, because I was very busy with my family, my work, and the book projects, yeah. Yeah. So, so what comes to mind, right, is this new role that you found for yourself and how you're documenting your city over the last few decades. Uh, how has it been during COVID? How has the graffiti scene Uh, been during COVID and have you continued documenting it? Uh, while COVID? Um, yeah, it, it, it started, uh, I think, at the beginning, it uh, came really, really out of control because it was the situation like uh, two years ago, um, there was a strike. So and after the strike, uh, so the, the the subways were not running for half day or one day. I don't know exactly. Still remember exactly. Um, and after that, fifty um, percent or nearly, nearly, maybe nearly thirty uh, or forty percent of the trains were bombed. Then um, it was was very hard for the for the subway company uh, to clean all the trains because they have not not very much cars at the moment so they they um they make a order for new subway cars but it was too late and they they had some troubles uh, with this order so um, it's very hard for them to buff uh, the trains when they have a lot of graffiti then two, a second strike so um they got again not so much bombed trains like the first strike but um more trains and then then came covid and covid uh yeah they are at the first uh, lockdown they put uh, a special um a special rush hour or non non rush hour so Between the rush hours, they normally are on. You have only a rush hour. Um, um, I think, yeah, 
you they had a 10 minute um um period for the trains uh bet between the rush hours so they put at daytime all the trains and the layups and so it was very easy for all the writers so to painting daytime all these trains so they 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 got fucked again by the graffiti writers and so the result was so maybe you know um maybe only it's difficult to say but maybe 60% of the in in the in the at the moment it's not that much now the trains not not anymore so much bombed but in this period of uh, maybe two years uh maybe 60% of the trains went to traffic the other 40% were whole cars or hard bombed trains they put immediately to the buff so whole cars um subway whole cars um running not not often so they put maybe um uh, 60% percent uh, were in traffic long time some trains uh, went went uh, half a year stuff like that and uh, in this period maybe of of from middle um 2090 to middle 2020 i photographed uh, 3000 panels so that's a big 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 figure and it was not at all so uh it was only the there were only 60% in traffic and of course i took not all i took not all of all trains in traffic photos so that was the effect of two strikes and the corona that in the, the was very hard hard turn for the subway company so that that's opportune for you uh, as a photographer it gives you a great opportunity and i want to just kind of shift gears a little bit um it, it, talk about that you know this book graffiti photographers united um uh, given that um we just lost an important graffiti documenter uh as of recently and um we 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 feel that um you know in the memory of jim prigoff you know the yeah. his legacy yes, and his work lives in uh, uh, uh documenters like you and and writers and the community that um takes the time out to look at itself mm -hmm. and uh, uh uh document itself and kind of preserve history um and you you created this book graffiti photographers united uh, tell me a little yeah. bit about this <clears throat> uh, yeah it was after the first release uh, analog versus digital and at that at that book uh, the main photos were were spotting photos but i started doing action photos and my idea was uh, to do a book only only with action photography and I did more and more action photography and then was a situation uh, that I got arrested again uh, by the police um, and yeah I had some trouble about that and it was like you know I in, in the zero years I had really troubles with the police so and it was like was just less less chunks uh, to came away uh, from the jail and it was kind of backflash uh, after the the graffiti bust so it was not a big thing but i for me i i it felt uh, like ooh bad situation i don't want to feel this again so it was not a reason for me to to totally stop um with doing action photos or graffiti on trains but um or yeah especially graffiti on trains uh, to to never yeah to to stop it but um the the point was um yeah i i i don't wanted to take the risk so often and so 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 often again that um yeah maybe this situation comes again and again so that i decided okay maybe i have not enough pictures um 
to do um, our own book project just about action pictures. Maybe let's do something with other photographers uh, together. And then I came to the idea to do Graffiti Photographers United. And yeah, then um, the, then the social worker in me comes again and said, okay, hmm, text would be also cool. Um, maybe let's ask the, the photographers what's their point of view on the graffiti scene and uh, let's do with their photos and their texts uh, a book about. Yeah. That's the story. And, and we're looking at this exhibition in this, this. Yeah. It's really a sorry. Big, it's a sorry. Exhibition. Yeah. Really big. It's a sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, please go ahead. Tell it's, us about this exhibition. Yeah. It's the sorry exhibition. Uh, Katja Hermann and uh, Mark um, uh, did it. Um, it was at the Korn Versuchsspeicher, it's the location. And um, it was a documenting uh, exhibition uh, of all periods of graffiti writing in Berlin. So, uh, and yeah, they, they also. Um, 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 the concept was also to work with kind of decades and the f from the late 80s to the 19 or to 2000 they took photographies from the writers and from the beginning of 2000 they took the photos uh, from photographers so this here this series see pictures uh, I did in the exhibition here you see on the left uh, on the left you see the picture we watched before right um, with the text and the subway so yeah it was a very very nice uh, exhibition with uh, 600 photos and very nice uh, um, yeah photos from a lot of photographers a lot of writers very nice location very nice opening party. Um, yeah, it was, was very, very, very good event. And there um, exists also a catalog about uh, it called uh, Berlin Writing. Yeah. Or so Writing given Berlin, that, not sure. It's released, it's released by Hitzerot. Yeah. Peter, so given that you found this space for yourself um, as a documentarian, uh, and you just released a new a new book. Is it, I mean, how far can the story? Do you feel the story go? And 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 how much more can be told about it, given that you are looking at this not just uh, from the lens of an observer looking at art and artists, but in the socio political lens that you have in your in your in your social work. Can you tell, can you say the uh, question again? Yeah, what more do you see? Do you see anything else that you can pull from this experience of, of graffiti given not just, not given that you're doing the social work, right? You're, you're taking pictures. What else do you think that we can learn from, from this experience of writing and documenting graffiti writers? Hmm. Mm. Yeah, what you can learn. Yeah, I, I talked uh, about um, before that you have different views and and maybe the the view of the photographer is more how you call it um, is more open minded. You know, he he not focus on the or maybe, or I focus not that much um, on the on the on the piece or on the writer. Uh, it's more for me to show it in the social context of the city, and maybe also of the way when you look at Graffiti Photographers United or or the Decades book, uh, which which I release now, is like also to to watch at the social background 
where the people are coming from. So, you know, the, the graffiti writers are more only focused on the names and uh, where I can put the name and how I can uh, do the incination of my graffiti name as best I can. So I take the risk. I do, do my best. I do the best. I'm the king. And my, my view is more also to look when, when with my, with the interviews I did for the decades book, it was more like, okay, also to look what is the social background of the people, how they, how they imagined, they imagined uh, Berlin in the 90s. So how, how they imagined the graffiti scene, all this, the social aspects um, was, was very important for me to, to show in the texts of the graffiti writers. So I did uh, interviews with, um, I think it's uh, 26 people uh, in the book and um, they wrote texts or they texts or I, with, with my questions or I did interviews with them or they, they find also new themes they want to write about. And that was a very important uh, thing for me um, to, to show the, 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 the social content of Berlin and of graffiti writing in the 90s in Berlin. So, but also to show some stories about the pictures. So you have now 860 photos in the book. So that's a lot. You have more than 30,000 uh, words, uh, texts, and the text is stories to the photos and, and text about what I said before, like the social, social context of the writers to Berlin and to their, to their um, life and where they're from. Yeah. And, and Peter, did, did any of them are in, the, in these dialogues what was the outlook towards the future? Was there any discussion of how they foresee uh, graffiti moving into the future? Mm. No, I asked, I didn't ask um, for the future, but I asked for, for now. So, you know, we, we are talking about the 90s and I asked them, what is the meaning of graffiti for you today or how, how you see this today? Um, uh, stuff like that, you know. I, I, I asked uh, the, the difference from, from yesterday, from the 90s to today. In the context of Berlin, uh, from, from uh, yesterday to today, of the, how they see the graffiti scene uh, today, and what's what's maybe more today is is train writing still um, a important thing for them today, or what what's the what's the important things uh, of them uh, today? So that that I asked, but I I didn't ask for the future. I, I'm curious. I'm curious. What's the average age of of these these young people uh, in the decades? Yeah. Or in today. Well, in, let, let's let's do this. I, I, I guess for decades you, they were older, right? We're talking about people who are probably in their thirties now. Yeah, the, the the guys, the decades, them are middle forty years, nearly fifty years uh, old today. They're older than me, and and yeah, so th them are not young. <laughs> no, but. Uh, which which young kids or which young people you are asking? No, I'm just wondering, you know, in terms of the, and I guess the reason I ask you about the age of the writers, because I think the one thing that has surprised me most about this culture is that um, there are a lot of writers. The train writers today? Yeah, there's a, there, yes, there's a lot of train writers and wall writers and graffiti writers in general who still. Yeah, I think it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The it's your your connection is bad, but I think my one is okay. So I will answer the question, and hopefully it becomes better. Um, yes. Yeah. The 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 average um, age of train writer today it's difficult to say, but maybe thirty. 
So I think something like that because you have, uh, I think you have a lot of uh, train writers or not a lot of, but you have a group of people which are, who are my age or a little bit older and you have some young kids. So, but them are maybe the big beginning or middle of 20. Like, let's say middle of 20. I think uh, you have not that much uh, train writing uh, people who are under 20 or like 16, 17. I think in the 90s, um, there were more, more, more young, young people. Yeah. And now the age, I think, goes a little bit more up and you have also uh, people who are doing constantly trains since... 25, 20 years, uh, 15 years, you have a lot, lot of people. Um, or, or, yeah, Christoph Maschner writes, writes also that you have also old school people which, uh, who are painted in the 90s and, and had a break uh, for, for maybe 10 or 15 years and now they, they, they come back, especially because you have the, now the golden era of subway writing. So because uh, the subways are going in traffic, I think it was a big, big thing that um, a lot of, uh, or not a lot of, but some, some old school guys uh, came back on the, on the subway in Berlin because um, everybody can see their pieces in traffic and uh, in the internet. It goes public. It's not like uh, in the 90s where you paint a subway, you have a photo, and that um, you have to put it or you have to send it to a magazine and hope that they will print your photo that somebody can see your painted subway. Today it's another, another thing. You paint your subway and at the station you have uh, four spotters uh, who are doing the photo for you and put them to the internet. Yeah, you're showing my, my uh, website um, the website address today is the last day for the pre-order discount of the decades book. Um, so if you want to um, save a little bit discount on your order, do it now because uh, yeah, tomorrow I, the discount uh, st is stopping. Okay. Good to know. I wanted to keep this information up for everyone. Uh, please go out there and support well, the book right, decades. Yeah. Worldwide uh, shipping, like, yeah. Yeah, worldwide English shipping. English and German uh, texts, of course. English and German texts, so also important information. And yeah, this is so, so now we have, because the work of the last uh, weeks and months, we have not only more than 600 photos, we have now 860 photos in the book. Yeah. What an incredible archive. So Peter, I just wanted to, uh, before we sign off, I wanted to thank you on behalf of the Museum of Graffiti, our team here, Graffiti, our uh, team here. for what uh, you've been doing for the community and, and for <laughs> taking the risks and for publishing these books, uh, give us a, giving us an opportunity to learn about um, your history and your experience in Berlin with the graffiti culture. Uh, documenting it, giving it importance, and like I said earlier, carrying the spirit of some of the great uh, graffiti documentarians like Jim Prigoff, may he rest in peace. Uh, and uh, yeah, so thank you. Yeah, rest thank in you. peace. We really appreciate it. And folks, I want to remind you all to go to Peter's uh, website, Peter stelzig.de uh, where you'll find uh, information about his books where you can order the books and know that today you're getting a discount so uh, rush out and place that order and uh, I'll leave it to yeah. you for the final Please word stay. sir thank you thank you thank you thank you for the invitation uh, very nice uh, was an honor right and uh, yeah thank, thank you for your compliments and yeah, I, I like the work and I yeah, I'm I'm working to to hopefully do it more and more and uh it's it's a big 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 uh point in my life, yeah.
Yes, after I'm my family, to... uh, after my family, the 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 second biggest point for sure. Yeah. Yes, I'm I'm looking forward to where you take this again because uh, the the social the social work angle. I think that's a that's a, a wonderful angle to come in at on on this story. So uh, again, continued success and and thanks again on behalf of the thank you. University. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Care, have have a yes. nice day. Yeah, and yes, sir. See, thank you to all the people who are watching us. Thanks you. Thanks for the conversation. Thanks you watching us, and thanks for for buying the book and everything. I'm, yeah. We will we will we will see uh, how how it's. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Bye. We'll push it. Hopefully, we'll have some in house too. Okay. Take One care. love.